Bill Whitaker on Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. This week on 60 Minutes, we reported on Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, UAP, more commonly known as UFOs. The Pentagon says this night vision video was taken by Navy personnel and is being investigated. Unusual sightings like this one continue to occur and be captured on video. Last August, the Pentagon set up the UAP task force to collect and analyze evidence gathered by service members who are now being encouraged to report these strange encounters. We met two former Navy pilots, Lieutenant Commander Alex Dietrich and Commander Dave Fravor. In 2004, they witnessed something shocking, inexplicable, and seemingly out of this world. Did the thought of UFO enter your minds? It was unidentified, and that's why it was so unsettling to us, because we weren't expecting it, because we couldn't classify it. But what I want to be really careful of here is that we um, don't jump to conclusions, right? That we don't s sensationalize this or... Little green men? Uh, yeah, little green, little men, green men or extraterrestrial. Yeah. You're seeing something that defies explanation. Right. Very much. Yes. It was November 2004, and the USS Nimitz Carrier Strike Group was training about 100 miles southwest of San Diego. The advanced new radar on a nearby ship, the USS Princeton, had detected what operators called multiple anomalous aerial vehicles over the horizon, descending 80,000 feet in less than a second. Fravor and Dietrich, each with a weapon system officer in the back seat, were ordered to investigate and found an area of white water in an otherwise calm blue sea. It appeared to them that an object about the size of a 737 was just under the water. So as we're looking at this, her back seater says, hey, Skipper, do you? And about that got out, I said, dude, do you, do you see that thing down there? And we saw this little white tic-tac looking object, and it's just kind of moving above the whitewater area. Do you ever drop your phone and it sort of bounces off the mm -hmm. countertop and then bounces off something else and it's sort of like no, no predictable movement, no predictable trajectory, yeah. I guess. Yeah. It was just... It was just like a ping pong ball. No just acceleration. Very, very random. Acceleration. As Dietrich circled above, Fravor went in for a closer look. So you're sort of spiraling down? Yep. The tic tac still pointing north south, it goes Bloop, and just turns abruptly and starts mirroring me. So as I'm coming down, it starts coming up. So it's, it's mimicking your moves. Yeah, it was aware we were there. I want to see how close I can get. So I go like this, and it's climbing still. And when it gets right in front of me, it just disappears. Disappears? Disappears. Like gone. And you saw no visible propulsion, right. no, no wings or anything to no. make it fly in our atmosphere? No, actually, when it turned and started coming up, it was kind of like, OK, because <laughs> we have nothing that goes that fast and just starts climbing at will. Seconds later, the Princeton reacquired the target 60 miles away. So in a matter like, of... Like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just appeared there. Mm -hmm. in, in seconds, yeah. it was 60 miles away. Mm -hmm. Later, another flight crew encountered what they believed to be the same object and briefly locked onto it with a targeting camera before it zipped off again. They didn't get a visual on it, but they did get this flare yeah, footage, the, the forward-looking infrared. So you've got the infrared image right. yes. and your eyesight yes. and the Princeton the radar. all saying there is something out there. Yes. The Princeton had been tracking the anomalous objects for days, Dietrich says they were unarmed. You know, I felt the, the vulnerability of not having anything to defend ourselves, to not having any rounds, anything on the rails. If this was, in fact, a hostile threat um, and we were engaged, I, I felt vulnerable. And then I felt confused when it disappeared. Dietrich says she briefed superiors about what they all saw. In no time, the story of their encounter spread quickly. Rumors like that spread within seconds. I would say with less than 30 minutes, the entire ship knew this happened. And what was the reception like? I actually thought it was kind of funny and started yeah. giving us a lot of grief. Ridicule. Yeah. 
ridicule. Yeah. Yeah. They, they made cartoons, and Nothing. on the ship's TV, they played Men in Black and Independence Day and Signs. Signs. And so they, they, they made fun of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Did anybody take it seriously? Yeah, I believe the Admiral's staff made a few phone calls, but that was the extent of it. The story will continue after this. Christopher Mellon served as Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Intelligence for Presidents Clinton and George W. Bush, and was on the staff of the Senate Intelligence Committee. He had access to top secret government programs. He says what Dietrich and Fravor witnessed demonstrated technological capabilities beyond those of the U.S. military's most advanced aircraft. In the case of the Nimitz, they seem to, these vehicles seem to have unlimited loiter time which we don't have. We're limited in terms of, of altitude. It's hard to design something that functions well at ground level that can go, you know, to 60,000 or 80,000 feet. And then drop. And then, and, yeah, and then drop down to the deck or drop to 20,000 feet, and you know, and it's like a straight vertical line. In seconds? Yeah, in seconds. And this has been captured on radar? Yeah. I've talked to some of the radar operators who observe that. Then the acceleration is beyond any, far beyond anything that we, that we're capable of. So What's the fastest one of our jets can go? Probably for a very brief period of time, uh, 1,500 or 2,000 miles an hour. Um, nothing near the degree of acceleration that has been observed in some of these cases. There's nothing we could build that would be strong enough to endure that amount of force and acceleration.